Welcome to another Fast Tip video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to use the inString function to find a string within a string in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Freddie from Arlington, Texas, one of my gold members. Freddie says, my vendor uses a status code that has the characters DSC in it if the part has been discontinued. Problem is, that status code also includes a bunch of other random information that we don't care about. How can I indicate which parts have that code? I know how to do a search manually, and I know how to do a wildcard search in a query, but that shows only those records. I still want to see all the rest of them. Well, Freddy, in this case, we're going to learn how to use the inString function, which will tell you if a string, in this case DSC, appears inside of another string, which would be your status code. Before we get started, if you don't know how to make calculated query fields, go watch this video. We're going to need to use the if function, the immediate if function, which is basically an if then statement inside of a query. Go watch that if you don't know how to use it. And optionally, if you don't know how to do a wildcard search in a query, go watch this video. These are all free. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them and come on back. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can go grab a copy off my website if you want to. So let's pretend that our customer T here, let's pretend the last name field, this one here, let's pretend last name is Freddy's uh, vendor status code. And some of them have DSC in them to indicate they're discontinued. So we'll put a couple DSCs in here somewhere. And, and Freddy says the, the code can have other random information in it. I kind of know what you're talking about. I had a customer that had to deal with something like this uh, a few years back and just, you know, randomly some products discontinued and, and the status code might have other things in there, like how many are in stock. Yeah, all in, a, in one status code. Okay, people do weird things in their databases and we just have to deal with them. All right, so I got a bunch of last names here. That some of them have DSCs, some of them don't. Uh, for some of them, it's in the first part of the field here. Let's put one in the first character right there, right in front of Janeway. Come here, click. Okay. All right, so now what Freddie's talking about is you could easily do a query using a wildcard search to show those. All right, create query design, bring in that customer team, and we're looking in the last name field, right? And for the criteria, I'll zoom in so you can see this better. We could just say like, and then quote, star, DSC, star, quote. This says, show me anything that's got DSC in it with any number of characters before and after that. And if I run that now, there they are. But I'm only seeing those ones and I don't see all the rest of the products, or in this case, last names. So that's not going to be very helpful. All right, so what we're going to use instead is we're going to make a calculated field over here, okay? And we are going to find whether or not that string DSC, that string of three characters, appears inside of the other string, which is last name. So we'll create a calculated query field. And I'll zoom in so you can see it here. Shift F2, zoom in. Okay. And we'll just call this X or whatever you want to call it. And it'll be in string, the in string function, last name, comma, DSC. That's what you're looking for inside of last name. Now, the in string function will return a number from zero to whatever position that code appears inside of last name. Let's see how it looks. Hit OK. And then run it. OK. And there you go. Look, zero means it doesn't appear. All right. That five means that it appears at position five inside that string. See, one, two, three, four, five, right? Zero, there's a six, there's a four, there's a one. Okay, see how that works? If you have null values, like let's say there's no value here, then the instring function returns a null as well. Okay, so make sure that you put something in there. If not, you're gonna get a null value. You can use is null if you wanna wrap that in there. Now, if you want to make this be a true false value instead of just a number, all you got to do is use that if function. Now, you could do it in a separate field if you want to, or you can wrap it around this one. Either one works fine. I'm going to come over here and use a separate column. Okay. We'll call this is disco. 
Now I'm not talking about the disco dancing, right? If is disco is going to be, you know, let me zoom in so you can see better. Is disco is going to be if x is greater than zero, comma, true, comma, false. Okay. And now when I run it, there you go. You get zeros and negative ones. Remember, zero is false, negative one is true. Okay. If you want to format this to show true, false, instead of negative one and zero, watch this trick. Let me close this. Right click, go to properties, go to the format property here. Now it's not in the list that you drop down, but watch this. You can type in true slash false as the format. Now when I run it, look at that. You get trues and falses there. Or, or if you want, if you like yes and no, do yes, no, like that. See, even the fast tips have other little fast tips in them. Imagine how many cool little tips and tricks are squirreled away inside my full courses. Oh, I teach all kinds of cool stuff. Now, I often show multiple steps like this because it's easier for beginners to comprehend, but we can actually get rid of a lot of this stuff. For example, we don't really need the if function, okay? Because, watch this, let me get rid of this. We can say, this is going to return that number, right? All right. All we have to say here is greater than or equal or greater than or less than zero. So it looks like that. What's going to happen is this function will return a value that's going to be either zero or a number or null, in which case it's null. Don't worry about that. Okay. But if this returns a number and that number is, let's say five, is that five equal to zero? No, it's not. So watch what happens. Look at that. You get a true or false value because this is technically an inequality. Is that number returned equal to or not equal to zero? And now we can format this as yes or no. And we can call it here if you want to call this is disco. Now, I don't usually go straight to this step here. Honestly, when I'm building stuff, even myself, okay, I like to do it in multiple steps and multiple columns there so I can see what I'm doing. And that's actually easier later on for you to look back on it later and go, what was I thinking? Because you might look at this two years from now and go, what does all this mean? But if it's, if it's laid out in multiple steps, sometimes it's easier for you to comprehend. And if you work in teams, it's easier for other people to comprehend. So... Yeah, you, could you make it shorter? Sure, you can make it shorter, right? There you go. But it's not necessarily more readable. And Access doesn't care. You know, we're talking about milliseconds of time here. <laughs> it's not gonna make it's not gonna make it any slower to have two columns here. But there you go, Freddie. That's how you do what you wanted to do. Now you know whether each one of these products is discontinued based on the fact that it has Disco in it, right? DSC. Now that one's discontinued. Right? That's that simple. If you want to learn about more of these funny string functions, right? You got left, right, mid, the length function. And I do also cover in string in this one. This is a free video. Go watch this, my string functions video. And if you really want to learn this stuff, I got a whole bunch of videos that are my comprehensive guide to access functions and access expert level 25. We cover lots of different string functions. Here they all are, lots of them and logical functions. And then we go into what math functions and type conversion functions. I cover all the functions. You want them? You want functions, baby? I got them. Okay. But in 25, that's where I cover the string functions, these guys. Ah. Okay. So check it out. I'll put links to all this stuff down below. So that is your fast tip video for today. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. 
Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.